When you enter this hobby of keeping shrimps, um, you will probably run into like a couple of problems and the main issue with this hobby could be like your shrimps dying for literally no reason. And in this video, I'm gonna talk to you guys about how I dealt with some of the issues that I had with my shrimps in the past and then how to treat certain you know, shrimps, diseases, or um, how to deal with those situations. Uh, I'm not going to tell you guys, you know, I'm not going to pinpoint the reasons why your shrimps are dying because I'm sure there are a million different reasons why they're dying. It could be temperature differences, you guys, you didn't cycle your water or, you know, whatever. You didn't feed it for like maybe two months so it's all dead after two months. I can't, I can't exactly tell what the problem may be, but um, for me, I didn't exactly have too many problems with these guys because like I said in the previous video uh, regarding you know how to set up a shrimp tank, uh, having a cycled water is very important. And before getting into this um, hobby of shrimps, I was a guppy breeder. So I had my troubles with my guppies and I realized how, how important cycling your water is essentially. So look at these guys. So these guys literally have no problem living in 10 gallons. There's probably 50 of it, but because I have a sump filter connected to it that's 30 gallons, it's they are able to proliferate in here. They breed and they do all the things that they used to do in my 75 gallon tank. Now that's now filled with my just you know a couple of quarries and one crayfish. So. Uh, I just wanted to let you guys know that cycled water is very important. I can't express this like enough, but if you read all the information on Google about you know how to properly care for neocaridina shrimps or caridina shrimps, whichever type of shrimps you keep, the first thing will be to making sure that your water is properly cycled. So definitely go into some digging of doing your researches on how to cycle the water properly. Um, my personal way uh, is to let me actually give you um, a simple tip that I have for you guys. By the way, it's feeding time right now. That's why that little thing is in there and these guys are like eating around it. You know, that's because I have my blood worm all, all in there if I can actually, yep, capture it coming out, there it is. So if I sh so I, I I usually shake this for about about a minute, and all the frozen uh, blood worms come out, and these uh, quarries start eating it around it. So this is that's exactly what's happening right now. Yeah. So I just leave it here for a little bit, and then you know shake it, leave it here, shake it, and then these guys just uh, come around and just uh, eat those blood shrimps. And this is one of the ways to have them breed. And there's my cray. What are you doing in there? Are you so lonely? But um, you know, go going back to the point of I have this entire drawer of medicine and other supplies, but cycling water is actually pretty easy. Tap water conditioner. This is actually the simplest way to prevent any any starter new starters death on fishes, shrimps, anything. Honestly, so pick one of these up at PetSmart or Petco, wherever whichever pet stores you go to and then just drop um, so it's one mil per 10 gallons it's very little one milliliter is literally nothing but you would think it's nothing but honestly to these guys it's everything because that that um, decides whether these guys will live or not oh that was buried wow as you can see these guys are proliferating in my tank because I you know cycle my water so it's very important for you guys to understand that um, so using that tap water conditioner is actually one of the simplest way to cycle it. That uh, tap water conditioner has everything that removes chlorine, nitrite, ammonia and stuff like that. So it'll treat the water and um, it's one of the fastest way to actually set up your tank. So if you read the bottle, it'll say you can immediately put in your uh, you know, aquatic friends in the tank uh, after you put just a couple of drops but I recommend even even if it says that I recommend for you guys to wait at least like a week you know if you can't wait a week like how how can you get into anything right so um that's one of the basics basic like courtesy for these guys is what I want to say having 
you know, having having the means to wait for them and then to properly care for these guys. And one of the ways to prove that is to wait for the water to properly cycle. After having your water properly cycle, you'll probably put, you know, a couple of fishes or shrimps, whatever you want in the fish tank, and you know, they'll do pretty well. So and I guess the temperature isn't exactly something that you have to worry about with most of the starter pack fishes and shrimps. Uh, like guppies, guppies really don't care. You can literally put them, in, put them in the toilet water and they'll live. And however, these guys, these neocaridina shrimps, they're pretty hardy too. Especially cherry shrimp. That's why everyone starts off with cherry shrimp. Uh, because cherry shrimps are one of the hardy, hardiest uh, shrimps out there. And they literally breed like crazy as well as orange sun kissed, I'd say it's a little difficult. I had my, this is my third try before having these guys proliferate like this. So first two or three tries, uh, I bought probably 10 and then I literally killed them all in within a month, uh, which was horrible. And then golden backs, golden backs are kind of a little bit harder to breed than, you know, the cherry definitely more difficult than cherry and a little bit more difficult than orange because they require a, I guess more precise uh, water temperature, water whatever, but they did perfectly fine in my tank, which I'm definitely thankful for. And after I sell the last batch of these guys, probably 10 of them, I will start a new cycle of colony of uh, yellow golden back. But temperature to these guys isn't exactly too much of a worry, I guess. And these are the blue diamonds that I have. Yeah, they're doing perfectly fine in this uh, heaterless and just sponge filter tank and as I said before having sponge filter is very important for these shrimps and literally if you if you have sponge filter in there that's all you need and just cycled water and some gravel and some plants I mean the list goes on honestly but um it's not too difficult to have these guys uh, alive for some time and even to start your own colony so a couple of things to go over is to making sure your water is cycled and having a proper uh, I guess temperature could work, but it's not necessary, but filter uh, for it to grow bacteria and moss. Maybe you can have uh, your light on for a little bit. As you can see, there's two different kind of moss on my wall. On the closer side is green moss, and then far back side is uh, uh, brown moss. So I cleaned this side, the closer side, uh, like probably a couple weeks ago after having all these brown algae. And then later on, they grow green. So that's a very interesting fact. I guess you can first grow these brown algaes and then clean your tank. Like, like clean it like with a you know, sponge, get rid of all the brown algae, and then you'll get green algae. I guess that's one of the easier ways to grow algaes. I don't know, just leave your light on for 24 seven for like a week and you'll have all of these brown algaes. So brown algae, you can basically think of it as burnt algae by light. And after that, you know, since this, these tanks are capable of growing algae, if you put uh, about eight hours of light every day for, you know, continuously for a couple of days, I guess you can get green algae. I guess that's one of the tips that I can give you guys. It's not scientifically proven, but just try it. If you're having difficulty growing algae, just try that. Just leave your light on when you're cycling the water for 24 seven for a week or two and have these brown algaes grow. And then after that, just clean your walls and then leave your light on just as if you, you would normally do, like eight hours a day or 10 hours a day intermittently. And then you'll have the gr green algae grow <clears throat> just like this. This is literally the living proof. So green algae on the side that I cleaned right there on the closer side, and then brown algae back there. And as you can see, all these baby shrimps uh, live off of this. When, they, when they're born, they're not exactly of, you know, age to eat the food that adults do. So as you can see, these guys eat all the mosses on the wall and this is how they grow. There's all different sizes. There's the tiniest one, you can barely see it. And then little, little larger one. And then, you know, a little, you know, kindergarten one. And then it, as they grow older, they move on, you know, to the middle, middle of the tank. And then as they grow older, 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 they come to the feeding booth right here with all these snails. I gotta get rid of all these snails. But that's how exactly it works. So making sure, a couple of things you know to know for, just a tip. And if you guys have any questions regarding any of these Neocaridinas, or even Caridinas, I'll do videos on Caridinas. These guys right here, later on, 
but I think right now it's best for me to explain the new keratina process because keratina is a whole different story. There are so many more other things that you have to do in order to proliferate these guys. But uh, any questions regarding new keratinas, cherry shrimps, orange sun kissed, or uh, you know, golden backs blue or green jade. I had a green jade and everything too, so just uh, let me know. And thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.